Hey guys, it's Bang for About PC Gamer here. So I want to talk a little bit about some breaking news. So it's been a long time since Computex and we haven't had basically any information regarding AMD's uh, new up and coming GPU Vega. Now we do know that RX Vega will be coming out later on this year, probably shipping around early August. But in the meantime, their Frontier Edition, which is their prosumer version of the card, uh, the Frontier Edition is now available for sale and um, a user goes by the name of Hashtag Define which regularly frequents the WCC FTech comment section has actually got his hands on one of these cards and these are a few pictures of the unboxing. Now let's be clear and um, we do know prior, um, primarily this is a prosumer card so basically geared towards professional applications but there's been some interesting developments in that time. Um, this card has a pro mode, which is its uh, standard mode, and also a gaming mode. And this allows people who develop games or any other kind of applications to actually test their games, which would probably be as close to the RX Vega um, card as possible with the Frontier Edition. So that's pretty interesting that they've gone ahead and done that. Now, this user has taken the liberty to produce some early benchmarking results. I'll quickly go through his platform. He's using an i7-4790K. Um, here are the um, the specs of the Frontier Edition. Now it's not completely um, available at the moment because I would imagine GPU-Z needs to catch up and be updated to to have all the information available. But as you can see there's 16 gigabytes of HBM2. Core clock speed is at 1600 megahertz and the memory is running at 945 megahertz giving it a total band rate for 483.8 gigabits per second so that's pretty awesome in terms of bandwidth now looking at the results as you can see um, Ycry at uh, Video Card Z has um, taught the liberty of kind of making it all condensed um, I'll quickly show you the slides that this Define um, person has actually provided so this is the Fire Strike benchmark and he is able to achieve a graphic score of 2100 or 21202 at stock now he did run a couple more um, results as well so he did do a slight bit of overclocking and was able to achieve 22916 and um, he did several other runs but looking at the condensed version you can see at 16, well, 1682 megahertz, it was able to achieve 22,304 on the GPU score. That's the best, um, well, near close to the best he was able to get. 22,986 is pretty much within run tolerance. So, this is not amazing, to be honest. This is really, really on par with the GTX 1080. As you can see here, GTX 1080 doing 22,585. Albeit this is a pre-overclocked version and an aftermarket cooled version, so I'll give it that. But it's nowhere near the GTX 1080 Ti in terms of performance. As you can see, it's GTX 1080 Ti getting 29,425. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to all of my results that I, I showed previously, but those were overclocked results. I'm not going to be presenting them in this video, but you know, it's for me. I would have to say this won't change dramatically when RX Vega comes out and um, when I made some videos back I think it was January 2017 I did say look the GTX 1080 will be doing battle with Vega and I got a lot of stick for it but at the moment it's looking like this is definitely going to be the case um, it's not going to be touching the GTX 1080 Ti by what we see here you know, there's probably a lot of time for AMD to make some fine tuning and uh, produce some, um, obviously, gaming focused drivers for their RX Vega. But to gain 30 to 35 percent, I don't see that happening. So, you know, we'll have to keep an eye on things and see what happens. But at the moment, um, it looks like this card will be doing battle with the GTX 1080. Who knows how much more performance the final version and the gaming orientated version RX Vega will be. But um, at the moment it's looking pretty underwhelming I have to say. So we'll have to see. Price will obviously come into 
it as well. A lot of people are saying it doesn't need to beat the GTX 1080 Ti. Well, I would disagree. I mean, it's a year. It's it's sort of it's been a year since the GTX 1080 has been released, and um, it would have to be significantly cheaper to to make it a success, in my opinion, because it's it's a year older than the Pascal architecture. And to come to market, it would have to be for me at least at four hundred dollars US um, to make it make any sense um, and prov and provide that price to performance value that apparently it's going to provide. So that's just my take on things at the moment. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video, or if there is any more news um, released, I'll definitely make an updated video to this. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.